one this is a lesson on electrostatics it has two words there electro from electricity static from static not moving so with an electrostatic we'll have a charge and the charge will not be moving with current electricity the charge is moving so here this object is charged it is positively charged that's why it, it's it has a plus so how do we get an object to be positively charged all atoms have protons and electrons protons are positive electrons are negative if you remove electrons you will have too much protons then that thing will be positively charged when you look at this one it's negatively charged it means it has more electrons than protons the first thing that you're going to look at when you look at these drawings it's electric fields i'm going to explain that first right an electric field they say it's a region where an electric charge will will feel a force now when you see these lines they're showing the electric field for this charged object now if i put a charge a small charge here and when they test they put they do a positive so it will be a positive charge small letter q then this is my charge there that charge if i put it there it will experience a force because it is positive charge when i when i put it on a positively charged object or positively charged thing it will experience a charge it will move away because electric field for a positively charged object they move away from the charged object now for a negatively charged object here is our small charge that we are putting there and we are still putting a positively charged object right because it's positively charged and my object is negatively charged they will attract so it will move towards the object so electric field for a negative charge object they go towards that object right we're gonna look at an example from a question paper it says a and b are two small spheres separated by a diameter of 0 0.7 0 0.7 0 meters so here's my sphere a must be b and the distance between them is 0 0.7 meters sphere a carries a charge of positive 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 column and sphere b carries a charge of negative 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 6 column now we see these two spheres that they've given us and their charges they've given you the charges as well and then now there's a p they're explaining further to us, explaining the P. P is a point between A and B and is 0 0.4 meters from sphere A as shown in the diagram above. So they choose a point. That point is P. There's no charge there. It's just a point. So that point, it's 0 0.4 meters away from not 0 0.4, 0 0.4 meters away from A. So the total distance between them is 0 0.7. So it means it's 0 0.3 meters away from B. Okay. We have not looked at the questions yet. When you get a question paper, try to analyze the question and understand the question before you start looking at the questions that you are asked. Look at the drawing, analyze, read and analyze. When you get to the questions, it will be much easier. Let's look at the first question, 8.1. Determine the term electric field at a point. So they're asking you electric field at a point. You should know that definition. You should have read the definition before. So let me write the definition for you. Electric field at a point is a force per unit positive charge at that point. You remember with those drawings, when they were testing the electric fields, they put a positive charge charge small positive charge so that positive charge will feel a force that force is telling you that you have electric field so the definition for an electric field is, is electric field at a point at that point so in this question is at p but at p with this question they didn't put a charge but they're saying to you if we put a charge there when we test the electric field we always put a positive charge that's why the definition says Electric field at a point is a force per unit positive charge at that point. 
8.2 says calculate the magnitude of the net electric field at point P. So when you see a net, so they mean a combination of all that point there, you need to calculate the, the electric field, the total electric field that will be filled by that point. So that point will, will fill an electric field from A and an electric field from B. With physics in your formula sheet, it's very beautiful. They have done headings for you. You cannot use the wrong formula. This section is electrostatic. Then you have formulas for electrostatic. So this one is the force. Now this one is the electric field. The formula is electric field is equals to K. What is that K? The K is the Coulomb's constant. You remember in this section we, 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 we learned the Coulomb's law, which is that formula. So the Coulomb's constant, where do you get it? In your question paper, you will be given a physical constant. You have all those constants that you're going to use in paper one. Then you look for the correct one. This is the Coulomb's constant K, and you'll be given the value as well. You don't need to memorize anything. So we, we're going to write the formula for the electric field. You take your formula sheet and you copy the formula from your formula sheet. Okay, the K is the constant. The Q is the charge. Now, in this question, they've asked us the net. So, the point P will fill an electric field um, according to, from A. And then we'll also fill an electric field from B. So, you want to have A, your charge A, and your charge B. And then the R is the distance between that point and the charge. But the R is squared. Now, because you have net electric field you're gonna have electric field from a plus electric field from b and then when you add them we get the net which is the total right where k what is k k is the constant i get my formula sheet i write the constant from the formula sheet it's 9 times 10 to the power nine okay and then the charge i'm gonna start with charge a charge a is one times five times ten to the power minus six that's my charge a then divided by the distance r squared what is the distance the distance is the distance between point p and a which is zero comma zero four squared but because i'm calculating the net i'm gonna add for charge b as well for charge b k 9.10 to the power 6 multiplied by charge b what is charge? i made a mistake here i didn't look at my formula sheet with my constant it's power 9 and my charge b it's negative 2.0 but when we calculate we don't write them the charges, the negative or the positive. Uh, so it's 2.0 times 10 to the power minus 6 divided by the distance between P and A. It's 0, 0,3. 0, 0,3 squared. I also made a mistake here. It's 0, 0,4, not 0, 0,04. It's 0, 0,4 because the total distance was 0, 0,7. And the 0, 0,4 were given in the question paper. You should not get that wrong. And then after here, you take your calculator. You punch everything in your calculator. Let's do that. Let's take our calculators and punch everything in your calculator. If your calculator is, you set it in the scientific notation, it will give you the scientific notation answer. If you didn't send, it will give you an answer, normal answer. Both answers are correct. Let's let's come. The answer is two comma eight four times ten to the power five, and the units for an electric field is newton per coulomb. Let's look at the next question. Eight point three a a 
point charge of magnitude 3.0 times 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb is now placed at point P. What they are telling you is that at point P, they put a charge now. The charge is 3.0 times 10 to the power minus 9. Calculate the magnitude of the electromagnetic force experienced by this charge. The electromagnetic force experienced by this charge, this, this charge, the new charge that they're putting here, will it's between two charges. So it will experience force from this side and experience a force from that side. So it means it will be a net force. Let's look at the formula sheet. Right in the formula sheet, the first formula in the electromagnetic field, the Coulomb's law, that's the formula, the force between the two charges. The force between, Coulomb says, the force between two charges is in directly proportional to the product of the charges. Do you see the charges are multiplied? And inversely proportional to the square distance between the charges. So this is the formula. Now in a question paper, when you are asked to define the Coulomb's law, come here and use the formula to make you remember the definition of Coulomb's law. Right, the formula of the force is from the formula sheet. A uh, force is equal to constant Q1, Q2, divided by R squared. Now, here in this question, I'll have a net force. So I'll have a force that will be experienced by the middle charge, the new charge they put there due to A, plus a force that will be experienced by the charge there due to B. So that will be my net force, right? Equals to, now we're going to do the force A and that new thing, that, that charge that they put at P. So the constant is 9 times 10 to the power 9. And then the charge for A is 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 6. Multiplied by the new charge that they put in there. Let me look at the question paper. I think it's 3.0 times. It's 3.0 times 10 to the power minus 9. Right? Divided by the distance between them, between A and the new charge that they put in P is 0, 0,4. And the formula for force has a squared as well, right? Now, I'm going to do the force between B and P. The charge, no, K first. It's 9 times 10 to the power 9. The charge, B charge, it's 2.0. You remember I said we don't write the negative or positive times 10 to the power minus 6. Then the new charge that they put in there, it's 3.0 times 10 to the power minus 9. Everything divided by. The distance between P, or the charge that they put in P and B, remember from the previous question, it's 0 0.3 squared. Let's take our calculator. Let's punch everything in our calculator. And then it's the same as that other question as well. Um, your calculator should be set in scientific mode. And then after punching everything, you find that it's 8.53 times 10 to the power minus 4 units. You remember we are doing force. So units for force is neutrons. In science, no units, no marks. Wrong units, no marks. You would not get this mark if your units are wrong. Or if it's neutron, you write it with a capital letter. No, you would not get that mark. You'll get all the marks here and lose that one mark that you have already. Okay. Now let me explain the negative and the positive, why we don't need to write them. Let's take, for example this force that will be experienced here a was positive and the new charge that they put in p was also positive so the force that uh, they will experience here the charges will experience will be whatever number but because they are both positive they will repel each other they'll push each other away because light tends repel girl girl 
repair, right? Now, in this one, the 0, 0,0 times 10 to the power negative 6 was negative. It was negatively charged. This sphere was negatively charged. The new sphere that they put in was positively charged. Whatever force that they will feel here, it will attract each other. It will be the force of attraction for this one because one charge is positive, the other one is negative. So you don't put the charges when you calculate because it's either going to repel or attract. If a question paper, they, they ask you to, to explain what will happen to the forces, then you look at the, the signs. Either they will attract or repel. The same, repel. Different, attract. This is the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching.